Hey guys, welcome to the new decade. It is January 1st, 2020. Um, by the time you see this, it's going to be a few weeks after, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself on shooting these videos, which is great. Um, but, you know, when I was younger, I used to wonder if I would make it to 2020. Well, guess what? I'm here, so joke's on you, buddy. Hey, what's that music? Take me, meet me at the bottom, John Lee Hooker. So, um, who's John Lee Hooker? Well, John Lee Hooker is somebody that started midlife um, doing uh, some recordings about 1947, yeah. And his first um, release was in 1948, Boogie Chill, and you probably know that one. But anyway, in 1971, he did an album with Canned Heat, and we've had some things going on with Alan Wilson, talking about Alan Wilson, um, his uh, influence on Ho Sun House coming back into the market. And um, guess what? Alan Wilson knew John Lee Hooker, and Canned Heat and John Lee Hooker did an album in 1971. Now, I got this album at a record store in Ridgecrest and they have a fine little blue section well at least they did till I got there so you might as well give it up but anyway I got this album there um Alan Wilson died um about September 1971 and this album was recorded in July of 1971 so by the time it was released later um and they got everybody together um, there were some people who weren't there, so the guitarist for Canned Heat, um, they had somebody stand there and glue his head on later in this picture, and you'll notice that there's a picture of Alan Wilson hanging on the wall there uh, because he'd already passed in Topanga Canyon. Anyway, this album is Hooker and Heat. It's something you really want to get your hands on if you can. So that's my music shout out for today. Now before I forget, don't, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that, you get notifications. Um, and uh, if you subscribe, you send me an email. I like getting your emails, like the one I got from Michael Hardwick talking about um, North Mississippi Hill Country Blues, and a lot of artists loved your email, Michael Hardwick. Shout out to you, buddy. Um, but yeah, John Lee Hooker uh, played Hill Country Blues and um, just get this album and you'll hear it. All right, so what are we doing here today? Well, you remember the White Owl box that gave up the ghost? I left a piece of this in, um, in Ridgecrest uh, on a telephone pole at the top of the box, so look for that when you're up there. Uh, but you'll remember I did an episode called Do Over, a very long episode, but it told you how to take one box that didn't work out for you and use another box that has different dimensions and how to lay out the scale and everything. It's kind of a complicated process. And I brought you through a long ways on that process. I'm gonna give you a link to it right up there, right about now, the do-over episode. So I think if you read between the lines on that episode, you could use the information to like take a neck off of a regular guitar and put it on a box and use the tips in there to lay out the scale and everything. So anyway, we've stripped this one down um, and put everything on this box, and now it's time to do the graphic on this box. I did a graphic episode. It goes through everything on it, how to get a graphic, sources for graphics, how to digitize them, size them to the box, and all that kind of thing. And I'm going to give you a link to that up there. It's one of the first episodes, probably the second episode I ever did. Um, it's long. It's been pretty popular. had a lot of hits. So uh, I'm not going to belabor you with a really long video this time, but I'm going to show you how to strip this stuff off, put the graphic on it, and then um, get back to reassembling it. So let's hit the bench meet me on the bottom john lee hooker hooker and heat almost hear zz top in there don't you i think there was a lawsuit about that anyway back to work let's get to work all right we're ready here remember this one i covered this in the opening it's finally time for the trash i really can't throw it away i have a problem with that hey 
before we get going on here, some people have figured out it's pretty cool to watch what's going on in the background. We've got the graphics over here that are going to go on this guitar. Look at it's a cone top from the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church in Ridgecrest. Always pay attention to what's going on in the canning lid and the number that's going on in the when we do the bench work. That's usually where the tips for the prizes are going to be when I give them away. Here's a bottleneck that I'm going to cut out and hopefully it, it, it works out. That is also from the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church. Look, Mississippi, 1952, Hines County. What's in Hines County, Mississippi? Are you going to Brownsville? Okay, and then we've got the uh, Hooker and Heat album. I can't tell you enough about that. And then we've got a couple products here. Earl Lube Paste. And um, you see on here, on Earl Lube Paste, it says, used by local legends. I don't know about the S on the end, but that is a fact because I use this stuff. And then there's the old reliable grandma's product, Mod Podge. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the difference between those two when we go to work because we're going to need to do that. But the first thing we're going to do is we've laid out this box, cut all the holes. I wish I would have taken these strings off, but I've said that a hundred times already and I didn't do it. So we'll just work through it. But anyway, I've laid out the box and you saw that again in that episode called do over those eyes that are up there when you hover your mouse up on the top right you'll see it there click on that if you're interested but anyway we brought this to the point where we've got everything cut ready to go in and you can see that I'm starting to wire stuff up in here got a new solder gun I want to tell you about it's awesome but we're going to strip this down now and um, get ready to do the graphics Okay, so we're going to take out our RV sink drains. Remember that episode, Easy Open Box, where I taught you how to do this so you can open and close the lid using the hinges on the Camacho Box. Episode link right up there, Easy Open Box. RV sink drains, they're going to run the cost up of your guitar about $1.29 each. So there we go. Now you see here, I've got this pickup that the artist sent me. Um, I put... A little keeper here. I'm going to pull that out. And I've drilled the holes for the mounts. We're going to use bolts with small bolts that will fit through there with a nylon insert washer. And then I've drilled a hole right there for the wire to run it down inside. I got the floating bridge. Remember the floating bridge episode? I'm burning up my eye cards right and left here. But floating bridge episode link is popping up there right about now. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how that works. Now, I'm going to take a, my Allen key and unwind both of my um, studs for my floating bridge. Get them out of the way. J1, what does that mean? Anyway, I should wear my glasses, you know it. Anyway, I know this is enthralling for you, um, but all right, there we go. Now, the trick is we're going to take this uh, lid and we're going to overlay this graphic. Remember, the, um, the theme for this guitar is Holly Springs, Mississippi. So I found this old graphic of a stock certificate. For 75 cents, you could buy stock in the Mississippi Central Railroad Company in, look, it's January 1st. Oh, J1, January 1st. But it's 1862, that was a while ago. But you'll see right there on the stock certificate, it says Holly Springs, Mississippi. So the first thing I'm going to do here is find out, remember that my sink drains go up here. The lid, box lid goes over here and so I got to line all that up and make sure I got that going the right way because if I don't do that I'm gonna end up with everything backwards anyway this will have to sit like this so I'm gonna pull this off again it's in the graphics episode I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up right and then I'm gonna use a product to put this on here I'm not gonna cut the holes out I'm gonna make sure that this is mounted here first and there's a reason for that Guys, first thing is we want to make sure we got a brush and some paper towel. You don't want a brush that's coming apart because you end up with strands of the brush embedded in 
uh, your work and, and you really don't want that. You want to keep the brush free of dust and stuff so that um, canning lid helps out there. Um, the next thing you want to take a look at is again, always know which side is what. Right handed guitarist, if I look at this and say, I can't keep my hands on stuff. Well, there's the top of the bottom of the box. If I put this on here like this, well, it's going to end up being upside down. So my neck pocket is up here, which means I'm going to lay this out here. Now, when you're putting these together, you want to kind of pick out which kind of which of the stuff do you want to kind of keep visible because some of it's going to be cut out here. So pay attention to that. Next thing is uh, in my original graphics video, again, I card up there, click the I. I told you that I was using Mod Podge matte for the undercoating and then Mod Podge glossy or semi luster, gloss luster for the top coating. I've since gone for the top stuff to Earl Lube Paste. This is good stuff. And the difference between these two is this one tends to be more elastic. So, um, the, the, the box isn't so stiff and that kind of thing and if you're talking about temperature changes and that I do like the way this looks this is really glossy and this is kind of in terms of gloss this product here is kind of the middle between matte and glossy so I like this stuff you're gonna see me using it as the top coat in the end okay so I've got this brush first thing I want to do is make sure the brush is a little wet I don't want it soppy where it dilutes everything, but make sure the brush is a little wet. And I'm going to take this dull Mod Podge and I'm just going to go through and coat this whole box. This don't have to be pretty, but I'm going to get a coat on the top of this lid here. Okay, I want to show you a little trick here now. I'm using strokes like this to go over most of the box but when you get to these holes you're gonna have to access those holes and put stuff through them so if you're brushing over it like this you're gonna end up filling those holes and there's gonna be clumps of Mod Podge and you're gonna have to drill this stuff out later so when you get near the holes take your brush action and do this instead of this because you'll find that the Mod Podge doesn't want to run down into those holes like that. So I'm going to end up doing that all the way around. You want to remember if you're using a box that's been around a while, it's going to want to suck up the Mod Podge pretty quick and you don't want it drying before you finally stick your graphic on there. So again, check them holes out, make sure they're not full of Mod Podge. And then again, this is going to be up, this is going to be facing the audience. I don't want to do this, I want to make sure that I'm okay. So I'm going to put this on the corner here first line up my corners like so make sure that everything's okay and then I'm just gonna do this oops I'm a little bit off right there that's why it's important that your Mod Podge is still wet whatever medium you're using so you can pick it up straight a few times now I'm gonna smooth it just a little bit but I'm not going to do too much of that because I don't want to start pushing it down into these sound holes. I'm going to leave this dry thoroughly. I'm not going to put another coat over the top and go to there because once this is dry, then it becomes stiff and I can cut out the holes very cleanly. Um, I'll do that with this tool I have here. It is like a surgical scalpel on one end and it's got this fancy hole here so all I got to do is once this is dried I just take and go through those holes poke them out like so and then cut them cleanly so we're gonna wait for this to dry also notice that I don't have a bunch of Mod Podge on the edges of my box if I do I want to take a little bit of water and get that off of there. I'm trying to do too many things at once because I do want the presentation of the sides of the lid. See that? I would have to cut that all off later. I do want the presentation of the side of the lid to be the glossy lacquer that Camacho boxes are known for. Anyway, time to let that dry. Hey, almost forgot while this is drying before you set it aside to dry, 
it's my experience that these corners are what's going to want to come up. So make sure that you go to your corners and make sure that they're they're addressed. Of course, you want to do that again before you wipe the sides of the box off. Now, if you're very impatient, people think they made blow dryers for hair. So people can be pretty. No, that's not what they made blow dryers for. They made blow dryers so you can expedite the drying process on graphics on cigar boxes. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. All right, that's going off to the side. And we do the bottom. You see those holes right there? Those are for our sink drain bolts. We know that this is going to sit like this. So I'm going to flip this up this way. The artist will actually see this backside more than anybody else. I want to make sure that there's not a bunch of stuff on here. In fact, it's pretty good to take something like this over it because if there's lumps, lumpy stuff underneath here, your uh, medium will not set right and you'll have bumps and stuff like this. But I know this is up here and look at that. Found that on the internet. Whoever did this, this is awesome. Your work is going to be on one of my guitars and I'm sure everybody's going to love it. I do. So I've cut it down to size. Same old thing. We're just going to go around and get all this. You want to keep off the sides because you don't want it scattered all over the lacquer, or the orange lacquer that's there. And then the only ones we've got to worry about this one are the holes are for the sink drain bolts. And we'll use that technique to keep them from being fold up, filled up wherever you're at. Just say it like you will. All right. Uh, one other thing, you got to watch your medium here that you're using because every once in a while it'll clump up and there'll be a little bit of it here and there and you don't want that. So notice that I'm getting the corners really good because that's where my problem is when you're grinding this stuff off. Sometimes you nick the corners so it's a little bit lower than everything else and it won't take on whatever you're using to glue this on here. So there we go. Once again, I'm going to find the corner. I've cut this down to size. I'm going to float this a little bit like this. Lean it down a little bit like so. There we go. I want to make sure that I'm able to move it a little bit before I start pushing down. There we go. We're still a little bit too much this way over here. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Now this one doesn't have all of the um, holes at the top did so one more time we're going to check those edges that's really important they don't want to pull up you're good and we're going to put this one next to the top to dry and I'll see in a little bit Oh, hey, I keep forgetting everything. I'm an old man now. People would say, well, hey, you got this glued on here. Why don't you just put a coat on top right now? I really don't want to do that because here's what happens. Your paper is getting wet underneath, and, and if you wet the top of it, then your paper starts getting mushy all the way through. And the next thing you know, you got a mess. You got, you got your color coming off and all that stuff. So you want to make sure that only one side of your paper is wet at one time. So that's why we're doing this and making it, um, solid uh, and then we're going to come back once it's dry and on there good and we're going to do a coat over the top and let that dry before we start going through and finding our holes and cutting those in there's a, a method behind my madness all right we've had this uh, brush soak in water we want to make sure it's not mushy and drippy to dilute everything down but um this is on here now. We've put a coat to attach this to the top of the box. And now we're going to switch to Earl Lube Paste. Now you notice I haven't cut these out yet. Because the paper isn't stiff yet. It's just, it is what it is. But if I put a coat of this over the top and let that dry, then it stiffens up enough for me to cut it and I can get clean cuts with this razor knife so what I end up doing is going around and just cutting this out once it's stiff enough 
Now the smaller stuff, I'll go in from the back with a very small drill bit and then pretend we're on the other side here on the paper. We'll just use this tip here and push it down and then cut it out. So here it would be this and on this side there would be a hole and then you just use the razor knife to cut that hole out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put one coat of Earl Lube paste on here like so. Nice and even all the way around and then we're going to put it in front of the heater like we did the last one. I cheated a little bit like that. And this stuff goes on real good. Again, once you're done, you want to check your edges and make sure that you haven't drooped everything on here. You don't want to make it all goopy and stuff. Just a nice, even layer. We're going to put um, several more coats of this on here before we're done. Do the same thing with the bottom here. I know this is thrilling for you, but I don't like to be my be by myself, so you're my captive audience. It, you guys save me so much in therapy fees. You can't even believe it. So, okay, there we go. I'm going to wipe the edges down now, make sure everything's okay. And back in front of the heater. All right, guys, we've had some time in front of a heater. And I want to show you a little trick about when you know it's time to cut this. You see this gap for the neck right here? This stuff is still wet. That might appear to be a little crinkled. You also see around your edges that it's raised up a little bit but you want that nice and firm and now I'll show you another little trick here you see these things little box cutters I forgot to tell you about that one of course we've got our little scalpel and um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going through here on these bigger holes like this I'm going to push my finger on the back and give it some pressure and then poke a couple holes like that. See? See that there? And then on the bigger holes or the smaller holes, I'm just going to use this drill to go through them. Now the bit's really small, like so. And then where they've all popped up there, see, now I can take this tip of this scalpel and push it down like so got one there that's the two studs for the floating bridge that's for the wire that was for the coil and the wire this is for the floating bridge now I got these two big holes here for my potentiometer see I can just push that through like that and then I'm going to take the razor knife here and I'm just going to go along the edge like that and cut those out until they're nice and smooth. This is just hand work. Now on the bigger holes what I can do is I can take this box cutter and I can start in the corner right there. Now what I like about these is you can adjust how much is out so I'm not trying to cut in there and have it be conflicting there so I'm cutting at an angle but I can just take right here and run that down like that and then like that and like so the next thing you know it will pop right out and I don't want to tear it but see got a little bit of trim to do which I can just basically take this and lay it along the edge like that. See how nice and clean that is. Go back against it. Come down like so. I hope you're seeing that. See that? And see that piece sticking up right there? I always want to come where I can use this as the guide here. Want the blade closest to what's being cut and the thing furthest away being the guide. See that? Little bit left right there. Now this stuff is still wet, it won't work that way. Do the same thing here. I'm going to start at the center and then I'm just going to go around and use my hole there 
and the walls of the box as a guide like so look at that and just go along if I need to you want to remember that the lip of the sink drain is going to fit over that and then notice my placement it still says Holly Springs where I can see it I thought that out ahead of time so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out and then we'll kind of show you what the box looks like a little later I'm going to put another coat or two on this I want to get it all coated in the way I want it before I put the hardware back on so the back is really easy because we only really have to worry about the edges Let me get this out of the way here. the edges which is basically you see there I'm just taking this razor knife and running down the edge of the box like that you see how simple that is and then I really only have the two holes so I'm just going to drill through the paper and it's been coated and then I'm going to flip it over and take the peak of my, that's Alan Wilson on the harmonica in the background, by the way. And then I'm just going to find my hole there and push that down like so. And then, of course, these will just screw down in there. One more time, I'm going to put a couple more coats on this. And make sure that I got everything I need before I reassemble things. And I'll see you at the end there. Hey, Alright guys, it's coming together. I like the finish. It's not too shiny. It's durable um, and um, it, it looks good. I think somebody's going to be happy with this. There's some more details I got to do here. I got to put the corners on and line some things up and then it comes time to set the bridge and get the strings right and tune all that in and everything. But I will keep you uh, abreast of what's going on with this guitar as it goes out. Um, last time, the, the music is John Lee Hooker and Can't Heat on the album Hooker and Heat. Really liked listening to this while I was building this. And I want to give a final shout out to my subscriber, Michael Hardwick, who reminded me of the importance of the North Mississippi Hill Country blues music and what effect it's had on um, music in general, especially me and what I listen to. So, hey guys, once again, I'll keep you in touch with what happens to this one. Hopefully, when the artist gets it, we're going to hear it. And, um, hey, I'll see you next time. Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year three weeks ago, okay? See ya.